you know, the easiest way to accelerate your progress on the way to a goal, especially in the beginning, is to make the decision not to reinvent the wheel. In fact, there are plenty of people who have already reached the goal you're wanting to reach. And the key is finding out what did they do differently? But if you were to meet someone who's already been there and done that, would you know what to ask them? Coming up next on the Successful Women Think Differently podcast, I'm going to give you five questions to ask a person who's been there and done that. When you've got the opportunity, when you've got the chance to have a conversation with a potential mentor or someone who's achieved success at a level that you're wanting to next, you need to be prepared. And I'm going to help you do just that. You know, over the years, one of the most common questions I've gotten from people is around, you know, how do I find a mentor? Or sometimes they don't even ask that. A lot of times I've just been asked to mentor someone, someone I might not have any relationship with, haven't met before. Um, And mentoring is a very involved process, right? Um, Oftentimes I'll just say, well, what questions do you have? And I would say probably 70% of the people I don't hear from again. I I don't get an email with questions. I don't Uh, get anything that says, oh, I understand what mentoring is and I have in mind exactly what I'm wanting to know from you. Here's the thing. If you are wanting to accelerate your progress, it can feel very tempting to, to reinvent the wheel, to think that you have to figure it all out yourself. But you don't. There are people who have already been where you're going. And anytime you have an opportunity to talk to someone who has that level of experience or wisdom in an area where you don't, it's good to be prepared to say, what do I wanna know from them? What do I wanna find out? From my perspective, I'm always curious to know what they did, what was the tipping point? What was the shift that they made or the thing that they did differently that they really believed helped catapult them to where they are? Now, this could be true whether you are talking about your career and someone who has gotten to a level you want to go to or a business that you're wanting to start or grow. This could be in relationships. Maybe there is someone you know and you just really admire um, their marriage and the tenacity that they've had. It might be a health goal that you have somebody else has reached or a financial goal. There are any number of goals that we can have where there are people around us who've been there and done that, and we can glean wisdom from them. We don't have to start from scratch and reinvent the wheel. And in fact, we can avoid a lot of mistakes by learning from other people's mistakes. So I've got five simple questions. You know I love questions because I love coaching. (laughs) And so I think questions can be really powerful even in this circumstance where you're not coaching someone But this is the idea of being prepared in advance because you meet people every single day who are successful in certain ways. And if you are serious about your own personal growth, there's going to be a curiosity about what has led to another person's growth or another person's success. So here goes. All right. This is from Successful Women Think Differently. And this is the chapter, Don't Go It Alone which is all about the power of relationships and why authentic connections are really more important than ever and so important to be able to cultivate. All right, so here's the first question, and this is just a a, a curious question to ask. What's the best decision you ever made? So it might have to do with the decision specifically around that goal, or they might answer it in a broader way, but often at a pivotal moment, Successful people make decisions that might go under the radar as the best decision. That's why I love this question. Oftentimes, you'll you'll hear something that they say that you just never would have thought of around best decisions. So what is the best decision you've ever made or that you ever made in this particular area? Like maybe it's a, a best relationship decision. Uh, that they have made or a best financial decision that was made, a best health decision that was made. And then just listen. Listen for what they're saying. And is this a decision that might be relevant for you 
and where you are. Second, what is the worst decision <laughs> you ever made? What's the worst decision? This is really about noticing where might I go wrong? Is, is there something I haven't really thought of? But you want to listen carefully to this answer so you can avoid making a similar mistake. And you also want to understand the why behind it. What, why was it the worst decision? What would they do differently um, if they could go back or if they'd known better? What would they have done differently? I know in when I think of, of some of my worst decisions, I realize that if I had just paid attention and had the courage to listen to what I already knew. So there have been decisions I've made that I knew deep down were probably not the right decision. But for other reasons, whether it was fear, usually it's fear, <laughs> I went ahead and moved forward. The good news about that, I discovered, and I've encouraged a lot of people around this, if this is you, if you've ever made a really bad decision and then you're afraid later about your own ability to make good decisions, if you're honest with yourself and you realize, you know, I had an inkling about that, I, I kind of knew something, something was telling me that's off. And then... You've made the bad decision, you've suffered the consequence, and rather than acknowledging that you actually knew the right answer, but you didn't follow that right answer out of fear, if you don't acknowledge that, then you can doubt your ability to make good decisions. Instead, what you need to say is, I knew that was a bad decision. So next time, I'll know too. The difference is next time I'll have the courage to follow what I already know. That's a tip on my own worst decisions. But you want to be asking that whenever you encounter someone who, uh, who you admire for whatever reason because they have achieved something you also are wanting to achieve. Here's the third question. If there's one thing you wish you had known when you started, what would it be? If there's one thing you wish you had known when you started, what would it be? I am asked this sometimes around um, my coaching career and because I'm CEO of the Coaching and Positive Psychology Institute and we uh, do coach training. In fact, we have another one uh, coming up here the first weekend in December. I'm often asked, what would you do differently uh, when you started, if you had known when you started in your coaching career? And I often say, <laughs> I would have just jumped right in and uh, been trained as a coach instead of my skepticism and then literally doing a little bit of coach training and then trying to figure it all out on my own, I would have just dived in wholeheartedly because for me, coaching was foundational to everything else in my business. But I didn't know that early on and I was trying to create this path that was really difficult to create and coaching made it easy. Coaching made me better at everything else I did. Made me better as a writer, made me better as a person. It helped me uh, be able to achieve my own goals as I became coached and I also self-coached. Um, it made me a better speaker as I was hearing perspectives from lots of other people, not just my perspective, but helping other people to overcome their challenges, their fears. So I always tell people I would have, I would have just dived in a lot sooner than I did. And so when you ask this question, there's one thing you'd known when you started, what would it be? Listen, hindsight's always 2020. So what you want to do is use that mentor, that person's hindsight as your foresight. Oh, let me keep that in mind. How might I apply that to my situation and my strategy for my goal? Number four, when you face a setback or a disappointment, what do you do? Here's the thing, and we all know it. We, we like to believe that success is going to be this straight line, but we all know it's not a straight line. It's always some sort of a zigzag, a few steps forward, a couple steps back. I mean, it, it just, it's a journey, right? And that journey has obstacles and Things don't always go as planned. So when you're asking the person, 
when you face a setback or a disappointment, what do you do? What you're really getting is a strategy for being more resilient. How could I handle it when I face a setback or a disappointment? Because I am going to on this journey if I haven't already. And so successful people often are those who can see the good even when things go badly. So those who succeed are usually those who are most willing to take risks and risk takers are comfortable with failure as a part of the journey. So asking how they handle it, how they handle disappointment, how do they get back up and how might you use that strategy for yourself? And then here's number five, and this is getting input directly from that person. And it's this, what is the wisest step you think I could take right now? So if it's in your career that you're seeking that advice or financially or relationally or in your health or even spiritually, whatever it is you're asking that person questions about because you have a goal in that area, ask them, what do they think is the wisest step? that they could that you could take right now so given your current strengths and weaknesses the opportunities the risks in front of you you know what's your best piece of advice is basically what you're saying and they'll tell you so really simple you know what's the best decision you ever made what's the worst decision you ever made you know if you go back is there something that you might do differently um, when you face a setback or a disappointment, what do you do? What advice do you have for me? What's the wisest step I could take right now? So I want you to think about someone in your in your circle right now who may have some good wisdom for you because you've watched them overcome, you've watched them achieve at a level that you find inspiring. Ask them these questions. And next time you meet someone, maybe it's at a dinner or a reception or somebody sitting next to you on the plane, <laughs> right? Sometimes those talkative people actually have something to talk about that could be helpful, right? Anytime you are in a situation where you have an opportunity to meet someone who's been there and done that with your goal, be prepared in advance with the kinds of questions that will help you accelerate your progress as you tap into their wisdom, All right? Listen, I want you to remember how far you go is largely determined by how much you are willing to grow. Successful women really do think differently and it starts with having that attitude towards personal growth. So thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Successful Women Think Differently. And I'd love to hear how you're using these questions who you're using them with and how they help you accelerate your progress. Leave a comment or a review. I would love, love, love to hear from you. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll talk to you next time. 